Now, political correspondent for Reuters, Andy Sullivan, and politics staff writer for Roll Call, Shira Tuplett. So welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alex. Thank um, you. Andy, I'll begin with you. The president will be holding his bipartisan meeting on Friday to deal with the fiscal cliff. What do you expect to come out of that meeting, and will any real progress be made? Oh, no, they're not going to get anything done at that meeting, but I think the optics will be important. They'll be side by side, getting their picture taken, and I think this will reassure voters and, most importantly, investors that they are serious about the problem and they want to get something done before the end of the year. Now, keep in mind that they've pretty much gotten a free ride from the markets so far. I mean, over the course of the year, everybody knew, knew this was coming up, but interest rates have, relate, have remained low, and uh, the stock market has been climbing pretty steadily until last week when it uh, dropped suddenly. So they're going to want to say, look, we're, we're aware of the problem, we're going to fix it. Okay. Sure, the president wants to raise taxes on the wealthiest Americans, but House Speaker John Boehner says raising tax rates on anyone is, quote, unacceptable. Is this all just posturing? I mean, do both sides have an idea you think we're compromised, will lie? <clears throat> Yeah, I think right now you are hearing a lot of talk and, as you put it, posturing between both sides. They're drawing lines in the sand, saying this is what we're willing to discuss, this is what we're willing to not discuss. But especially on the staff level right now, there are discussions going on about what is really on the table in terms of what they could compromise on. Uh, for example, uh, Speaker Boehner and House Republicans have thrown out the idea of uh, reforming the tax code and maybe looking at some of the deductions for both personal and business income as a way to generate revenue. That's one idea that's been thrown out. Okay, Andy, in today's New York Times, an article titled Boehner tells House GOP to fall in line. It talks about the conference call the Speaker Boehner had with the House Republicans last week. And the quote goes, members on the call, subdued and dark, murmured words of support, even a few who had been a thorn in the Speaker's side for much of this Congress. It was a striking contrast to a similar call last year when Mr. Boehner tried to persuade members to compromise with Democrats on a deal to extend a temporary cut in payroll taxes, only to have them loudly revolt. Now, last year's grand bargain between Speaker Boehner and the President and that fell through reportedly because of the Tea Party types in the GOP. Should we believe that's changed? Yeah, I think the dynamics probably have changed a little bit after this election. I think Speaker Boehner has a lot more clout to get his uh, caucus in line. I mean, the president was reelected and Democrats picked up seats in the House and the Senate. So a lot of these Republicans who were elected in 2010 may not believe that they have such a mandate from the public to uh, cut spending and shrink government as they did two years ago. Um, but I think it's not going to be an easy process. I think probably what you're going to see is uh, Republicans pass a lot of legislation out of the House and then watch it get rejected in the Senate. They'll have to do this a few times and then maybe they can reach some sort of compromise. It's well, not going to it's not going to be quick. Speaking of the Senate, Shira, you know, the president says he's willing to compromise, but could he face pushback from the Dems in the Senate? I mean, are they going to insist on taxes being raised for the rich? Uh, I think that's definitely a lot of Senate Democrats, uh, something a lot of Senate Democrats would like to see. Uh, also, to bring up Social Security, Jay Carney mentioned Social Security could be part of some uh, grand bargain. Well, Senate Democrats, uh, especially Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, does not want to touch Social Security. He's been insistent upon that for as long as I've covered the Senate, certainly. So I think there will be some roadblocks there. It's going to take negotiation through all three chambers to get something done. Okay, here's a Two question. Two chambers, excuse me. Right, right. Uh, Andy, who blinks? first. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say the president has more leverage at this point. Um, after the election, there's been a lot of soul searching on the Republican side about, you know, can we not appeal to Latinos? Are we losing women? And uh, if we do go over the fiscal cliff, there's a chance that Republicans will get blamed for that. Uh, that could put them at risk of losing support in the business community as well. Uh, there's another factor here that if, uh, in fact, all tax rates for Americans rise on January 1st, the president can just come back and say, hey, I got a great idea. Let's cut tax for everybody except for the top two income brackets. Hmm. That'll be harder for the Republicans to defend. Hey, Shira, do you think a deal is going to be reached for January 1st? Uh, I think we'll see a deal. Whether or not it's a good deal is still in question. Uh, there's still a possibility they could take some of this and kick the can down the road just a little bit. And then if you're Democrats in particular, you're going to see your numbers increase in the Senate. That would give the president even more negotiating room and power after January 1st. Okay. Guys, good to talk to you both. Andy Sullivan, Shira Tuplitz, I appreciate it. Thanks.